Okay, let's get this started. So first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Mindy Snyder. I'm the radiography program coordinator and instructor for the course or the program. And I also have uh, Caleb Asbury um, on this Zoom with us and he's the Allied Health Academic Advisor. So he, he will be monitoring the chats and is available to answer any questions um, at the end that pertain to uh, admissions and specific things on how to get into the radiography program. So feel free, um, if you're thinking about questions uh, up for him, please jot those down or send them via chat so we can get those answered. And again, there will be time at the end also of this Zoom meeting um, for you to uh, ask questions. Um, so. So first, uh, I'd like to welcome you to the Zoom and hopefully you know, we'll answer all your questions and spark some interest um, in the radiography program. So the career, what do radiographers do? This picture here is uh, a radiographer or an x-ray tech. Um, they can be called x-ray techs, radiologic technologist, radiographers, RTs, so we're referred to um, in many different ways and I may use those terms interchangeably. So um, just so that you can keep track, radiographers, radiologic technologists, RTs. Some, some people get confused um, when you hear radiologists. Um, we are not radiologists. A radiologist is the physician who reads the x-rays um, we obtain the x-rays, we take the x-rays, we position in the patient and whatnot and set the proper technical factors to obtain those images to provide them to the radiologist so that they, they can be interpreted um, and a diagnosis can be made. So the picture here shows a, a radiographer taking an x-ray uh, of a patient. I have uh, to start off with a, a little video that I wanna share with you. It's only three minutes long or so. Um, in the video, you're gonna learn a little bit about radiography. Uh, I'm gonna do a little spiel. And then also uh, we have some second year students who are gonna share some of their experiences um, of the program. And then I'll continue with the, the PowerPoint after this short video, so. Hello, my name is Mindy Snyder. I am the coordinator and full-time instructor for the Kellogg Community College Radiography Program. Katie Piper is an adjunct instructor for the program as well as clinical instructor, working with its students in the clinical setting. KCC's radiography program provides students with hands-on education. During the program, students learn how to operate the latest in digital radiographic equipment. They learn the science behind image production, and they position patients to obtain high quality diagnostic images. The campus has a lab where students learn to position and operate fixed as well as mobile x-ray equipment. They practice skills in class that they apply during their clinical rotations. The program is a full-time commitment requiring students to participate in courses, labs, and full day clinical rotations each week. Students attend clinicals between two and four days a week, depending on the semester. Instructors are passionate about the profession and have over 30 years of experience. The reason why I chose the radiography program was because it is a two-year program, so it was one of the shorter ones, but it is also a way to help people, and that's something that I really want to do in my career and also bones are actually very interesting now that I'm getting to know more about them. I chose x-ray because I was really interested in the trauma aspect of it and like the injuries and the variety of stuff we see. Um, I chose KCC because of how close it is to my home and um, I heard really good things about our program before I came here. I really enjoy doing the clinical setting. I always liked little kids and I really like working with little kids in the fluoroscopy. So what I enjoy most about x-ray school is 
just the different pathologies that you see on an x-ray, like you might see a broken bone, and you'll wonder, oh, what type of fracture is that? My favorite part of x-ray would definitely be working in the ER, because you don't know what's going to come through and you don't know what you're going to see. And one of my favorite exams has to be a hip exam. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but there's definitely some critical thinking aspects to it that I really enjoy. So advice I'd have for future students is, well, number one, you have to like what you're doing because you go and help people every day. Uh, sometimes you're going to go into the ER and see some things that are a little bloodier than normal and you gotta have a strong stomach for that. Also, I would say you have to be consistent with your studies. It's not like you gotta cram all at once and be super hard at it. You just gotta do a little bit, but over time it amounts to a great amount of information. Advice I would give future students would definitely be to use the resources that are available to you, like um, your clinical instructors, the other technologists that you work with, they are wonderful resources to help you get like your routine down and really find your groove so that you're comfortable in what you're doing. So x-ray, becoming a radiographer is a career with a purpose. So you have to ask yourself, do you enjoy helping others? Are you detail oriented? Do you love the idea of being in the center of the action in a medical situation? Then this might be for you. Radiographers use cutting edge digital equipment to capture images of organs, bones, and tissue to assist the physician, which I referred to earlier as the radiologist in diagnosing medical problems. Radiographers are equipped with the technical skills to operate imaging equipment. So we set what we call mass and kilovoltage on the x-ray console to ensure that we deliver the proper exposure depending on the part that we're x-raying. So we have to, not only is there a patient care aspect to x-ray, but there's also a technical aspect. Um, which is why I actually got into x-rays from that technical uh, perspective. I liked the idea of manipulating the mass and the KVP and these different variables and operating the actual equipment. Um, and I like the idea of not working 100% of my, you know, of the time with a patient. I liked patient contact, but I didn't want to work with the same patient um, all day or all week or whatnot. I wanted, um, the opportunity to interact with patients, but more on a, a short-term basis. Um, so not only do you have the technical skills to operate the e equipment itself, but you also have, have to have interpersonal skills um, in order to provide exceptional patient care, because that's a, an important aspect as well. You kind of have to have both aspects. You want to be able to work the equipment, manipulate the equipment in order to obtain the highest quality diagnostic images for the radiologist to interpret, but you also have to have the interpersonal skills to provide exceptional patient care. Um, so it's important that you, you understand there is a, a patient care aspect to the profession as well. So when you graduate or become a radiographer or a registered radiologic technologist or an RT, like I said before, you're going to work in general radiography or general diagnostic radiology. And one of the uh, x-rays that you will obtain that you can see here is a chest x-ray. It's a very common x-ray. As a matter of fact, it's, it's more common now um, than ever before because uh, there are a lot of chest x-rays being taken as a result of this pandemic, this COVID-19 pandemic that we're experiencing. Patients are coming into the hospital, and one of the first x-rays that they get, one of the, one of the first and most important x-rays that they will get, will be this chest x-ray. Um, so this, this is a, the initial thing that will happen um, with a patient that goes into the ER or in as an outpatient with short of breath or chest pain or a fever or a cough. Um, are experiencing any of those symptoms that we're hearing today that pertain to the COVID patient, they're going to get a chest x-ray. So, um, and this is what a chest x-ray looks like. If you haven't seen an x-ray before, um, you can see the, the clavicles um, towards the top here. Um, the heart shadow is this white shadow here. So we can see what's going on with the heart if it becomes enlarged and a chest x-ray will show that. 
Um, the interesting thing with the chest x-ray is that it's one of the more basic x-rays that we take, but also one of the most important x-rays that we take because there's a, there are a lot of pathologies that the chest x-ray will show. Like I said, we can see if there's an enlargement or something happening with the heart, um, and we can also see um, what's going on within the lung. So that's uh, one of the x-rays that we'll take. Um, you'll also, depending on the uh, setting in which you will work, uh, when you become a registered technologist, you may be assigned to the ER or the trauma department, the emergency room. Um, there you'll take your portable x-ray uh, machine, which you see here. Everything is digital today, so we work with all digital equipment. And what's unique about that is when you position the tube over the patient in the ER or trauma setting, and you take the x-ray, you set your technical factors, your KVP and mass and whatnot, you're gonna, the x-ray that you obtain is gonna show up immediately on a monitor. So you're gonna see immediately what's going on with that patient. So the advancements in technology and um, uh, all this technology that we're, we're now using in the, in the clinical setting is allowing us, allowing the physicians to make diagnoses quicker and therefore they're able to treat the patient quicker. So, um, which is a wonderful thing. So the other thing that you see here, the x-ray that you see is one, the patient is on a backboard. You can see that they're, they're on a backboard here and you can see there's a significant injury here. There's a fracture to this femur. So this patient came in to the emergency room as a trauma patient, um, could have been via air care helicopter or it could have been via ambulance. Um, and an x-ray tech was in, in the ER waiting for the medical staff to bring the patient to the trauma room so that we could obtain these images. Um, more likely than not, this patient was taken to the OR and I'll show you some pictures in a second uh, about what we do um, in the emergency or in the OR as well. So. Not only um, are we taking uh, x-rays of outpatients, but we go to the emergency room. That is if you work in a hospital setting and take x-rays on trauma patients. Some of the traumas that, uh, and things that you might see as a result uh, of those patients, you can see this is a fractured humerus here on the left. In the center, you have a fractured distal tibia so this is a very significant injury. And then the, the one on the right here of this foot, it's a little bit, maybe a little bit difficult for you to see, but this particular patient actually shot themselves in the foot with a shotgun. And so any types of those in things that happen, um, we need to, they need to use x-ray to assess the extent of the injury. We need to see what's going on. And then after the physician obtains this image, then they can make decisions on how they're going to treat this patient, um, whether, whether or not they can treat them in the ER or whether or not they may need to go to the OR and have surgical repair, um, which they use us for as well. Dislocations. Patients come in not just for fractures, but they come in if, if they have something uh, that has been dislocated. The, the first picture you see here is an, uh, an artificial hip. So interesting enough, this patient, so this is an elderly patient and they needed a hip, a total hip replacement is what we call that. So they have an artificial ball and socket here. And this artificial hip was actually put in while the patient was in the, uh, the surgical unit or up in the operating room. And x-ray was used um, in order for this hardware to be placed properly up there. It just so happened that this particular patient um, sustained a dislocation, had to come back to the hospital where we obtained images. And then again, decisions are going to need to be made by the physicians on what happens with this patient moving forward, whether or not they need additional surgical care or whatnot. The center picture is a dislocated shoulder. It's, and you can see the humoral head or the head of the humerus sitting much lower than it should be. It should be up a little bit higher here. And then the picture on the right is another dislocation. This is uh, the fifth digit or your pinky finger. And that is, you can see 
laterally dislocated. It should be sitting right on top here of this fifth metacarpal foreign bodies. So not only fractures, not only dislocations, but they also use x-ray to localize foreign bodies. The first x-ray that you see here, the chest x-ray is of a child. So it's a smaller chest x-ray. And you can see this uh, really white object here. So it's not uncommon that kids put things in their mouth and coins, marbles, toys, um, they just, they swallow them and the parents panic and bring them into, into the emergency room so that we can take an x-ray to find out whether or not is the object, whatever it may be, going to pass through the elementary canal safely or does it need surgical removal? Right? Is it, is it causing a blockage? So that's one of the things that they're looking for is where is the object and is it going to pass safely? So this, this happens to be a coin and this coin is um, just about ready to enter the stomach. It, it's still in the, it's in the distal esophagus and this, this black bubble here, that's air that's in the fundus of the stomach. And so that's how you can identify that this is the stomach is because of this um, air bubble that's in the fundus. And so this coin is just about ready to pass into the stomach. Um, and then the x-ray to the right here is a nail. So this particular patient actually shot themselves accidentally in the hand with those nail guns. You know, carpenters use automatic nail guns and sometimes those misfire. And it's not uncommon to get these patients um, into the ER. Um, I've seen them in the foot, the hand, the knee. Um, so it's important that um, we obtain the x-rays. Um, what they're looking for is where is that object? Where is that nail in this particular case? And is it is it in the bone? Is it in soft tissue? So we can't actually tell exactly where this nail is just with this image. And one of the things that you learn um, in the program is how to obtain different projections and different images so that you can provide the information to the physician to tell them exactly where these things are um, so that they can make decisions on the care of the patient. You know, does it need to be removed? How do we remove it? What's the approach? Um, so there'd be other, uh, projections or views, which we would call them. Um, we would turn this patient's hand on their side and take another picture and that would give us a different view or projection so that the physician knows exactly where it's at. Because right now we don't know if it's on the top of the hand or on the palmar surface of the hand. So imaging is very critical in determining and localizing foreign bodies. One of the things that I've heard from the second year students is they, they didn't know that they, they were gonna do more than taking these general x-rays, these chest x-rays and fractures and dislocations and other things. Um, one, another aspect of what we do is we work what's called in the fluoroscopic room or in fluoroscopy where those patients come in and we're not necessarily looking as much at the bony aspects as we are what's happening with some of the internal organs. So uh, we do what's called esophagrams and upper GIs and barium enemas and small bowel follow-throughs and arthrograms, hysterosalpingograms. There's a, a myelograms. There are a lot of procedures that we perform in this fluoroscopic suite. Now, uh, the gentleman that you see here working the fluoro tower is the radiologist or the physician. The x-ray technologist, the radiologic technologist, the RT, the radiographer, is this person over here. What we do is assist the radiologist during fluoroscopy. So we would explain the procedure to the patient. We would set the room up. We would assist the physician through the process. And then we would provide follow-up instructions to the patient. What's interesting about fluoroscopy is that it's live x-ray. So we can see um, what the patient's doing. Um, when they swallow barium, we can watch the barium go down. When we inject a joint with x-ray contrast, x-ray dye, 
we can move the joint around, we can see what's going on inside during movement. Generally speaking, um, when you're in the ER taking, taking pictures of fractures and whatnot, we don't want the patient to be moving. We don't want anything to move because anything that moves um, an x-ray will be blurry. However, with fluoroscopy, it's, it pro provides us with a unique aspect in that we actually get to see moving things. That's the whole idea. We want to see how the anatomy is functioning. So we want to see how the esophagus is functioning. How does it empty into the stomach when the patient swallows barium? A lot of patients have what's called a hiatal hernia or reflux. That's something that we would assess um, through a, an esophagram. When they drink the barium, we can see whether or not uh, the barium goes back up towards the proximal esophagus or does it you know, empty safely into the stomach. The picture that you see on top here is of, a, of our, your colon. This is what your colon would look like. This patient had a barium enema. Um, and what you're seeing is the, col the outline of, your of this entire colon. The only way that we can see this anatomy is if, there, if we provide um, barium. I mean, if we take a regular abdomen x-ray, we can't see the colon like that. So we have to use something to enhance, enhance the internal organ so that x-ray can see it. The x-ray on the bottom here is of a shoulder. The, it's inverted, so the bone happens to be uh, darker instead of white, which is a little bit different than what I showed you previously, but that's a fluoroscopic thing. The very, the dark stuff that you see is the x-ray contrast or the x-ray dye that was injected into that joint space. And what they're looking for here um, are rotator cuff tears and damage um, of the integrity of the joint space. So what happens nowadays is we inject the contrast into a joint and then the patient is um, taken to like MRI where um, additional imaging is done. So we put the x-ray dye into the joint space, take the patient to a, a different modality, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, to have additional imaging done on that patient. Here's another example of something uh, in fluoroscopy. This, the x-ray on the left, this says UGI, that's an upper GI or upper gastrointestinal um, exam. Again, this is the patient's, this is what your stomach actually looks like. So this white stuff at the top is actually in the fundus of the stomach. And then you can see the barium, how it kind of coated the lining of the stomach. So a lot of people think that the only thing that we see are bones, but actually when you do fluoroscopy, you see internal organs also. So we have patients drink barium so that we can actually see and assess what's going on with internal organs. In this particular case, the stomach. The picture on the right is a little bit different. It's actually a, a stomach or an upper GI exam. But what's unique about that is the stomach is much smaller. This particular patient, if you've ever heard of a gastric bypass surgery, so this particular patient had gastric bypass. They had a significant portion of their stomach removed. And again, x-ray is used throughout that entire process both before and after that procedure, because what we wanna find out is, did after the gastric bypass surgery, we'll have them drink uh, some x-ray dye type of uh, substance so that we can see the internal organs. And what we're looking for is, are there any perforations? Or are, there, are there any holes? Does any barium leak out of the, the stomach where they did the, perform the surgery? So they use x-ray for that perspective as well. Another very interesting and fun thing is surgery. So um, when you become a radiographer, x-ray tech, RT, radiologic technologist, right? Um, you may also work in surgery. Um, here's an example of one of the exams that you might be involved in. This is called the tibia rotting. So here's the patient. They came, this particular patient came in uh, in the ER. The x-ray tech went to the ER, or the patient was wheeled to the x-ray department. They obtained this x-ray here, and you can see there's significant fractures to both the fibula and the tibia. 
this patient went right to surgery and they repaired this with a rod. It also may be referred to as an intermedullary nailing procedure or a tibia rotting, either way. But they put a metal rod in this patient's tibia and then they put screws in the rod to stabilize it. Now, we are the eyes to the surgeon in the OR. So if you look in this particular situation, this big C arm, you can only see the top of it, but this, this piece of equipment here is the x-ray equipment that's used. And then the monitors here are where the pictures are. So the physician, the x-ray tech is over here in the corner in the pink apron. They're operating this equipment. We're the eyes to the surgeon. The surgeon doesn't know where to put essentially exactly where the rod needs to go or where those, how are they gonna put the screw in a hole that they can't see? So they use, where the, their eyes up in the OR. We need to show them where to place those screws. So the physician will tell us where to put the, the equipment and we operate it and manipulate it so that we can line holes and screws up so they can see how far do they have to drill the screw and what size screw do they need to use and so on and so forth. So we're also used in the, sur in the surgical suite. Here's another uh, an example. This uh, is a patient that came in with a broken uh, ulna and the particular procedure that they had done up in surgery is called an ORIF. We call that an open reduction internal fixation. So we're opening the patient. The patient is being opened up by the physician up in the OR. And then they're using x-ray to place this plate and these screws to stabilize this fracture. I personally, when I was practicing, um, I practiced um, at Ascension Borges uh, for almost 15 years as an x-ray tech and as a clinical instructor. So I, I have lots of experience in the clinical setting. Um, and one of my favorite areas uh, to work was in surgery. Um, it's not for everyone, um, only from the perspective that um, you need to be very detail oriented, um, but it's, it's very rewarding. Um, and it's an area that I enjoyed immensely. And as a matter of fact, um, one of the things that I continued to do um, was take surgery call so that I stayed up on my surgery skills. So at two o'clock in the morning, you get called in um, for a surgery case, um, which was very interesting. Um, but again, it's not for everybody. So I'm gonna talk about you know the different opportunities uh, and whatnot here moving forward, but interventional radiology. So when you become an x-ray tech, one of the options that you have, um, well, let me back up. What's, what's interesting and unique about our profession, about radiography, is that once you obtain your credentials as a radiologic technologist, once you graduate from our program, there are, you can stay in general diagnostic and do all of those things that I just showed you, which is very rewarding, and or you can continue. Um, once you become an RT, you can work in interventional radiology. Um, there, um, some of the common procedures that you might see if you so choose to go in that direction, um, angioplasty, stenting, um, looking for blood clots, uh, biopsies, vertebral plasties, where they inject a cement product into the vertebral body to stabilize fractures for pa patients who have like DJD or degenerative joint disease. Um, IVC filter placements to catch blood clots. So there's a lot, interventional means they're, they're intervening, they're introducing something uh, into the patient. So there's different types, many different procedures. Um, they use tubes and lines and they shoot x-ray dye into veins and arteries and whatnot. There are a lot of different procedures done in the interventional radiology lab. And again, this is something that you don't have to do. This is uh, additional training that you can get on the job um, if you are interested. Mammography is another one. Um, again, you have to be an RT once you become an x-ray tech. If you have an interest, um, you can work in mammography. Some people um, work both in x-ray and mammography you know, a couple days a week in one and a couple days in a week in the other. Um, some people um, transition right into mammography and work strictly in mammography. It completely just depends on um, the facility and your interest. 
on what you want to do, but um, that's also an opportunity. Another thing um, that's an option to you is teaching, um, which is what I do. Um, so I started out, like I said, at Borges, and while I was at Borges, um, I became a, uh, an instructor, a clinical instructor for KCC, Kelly Community College, and I would teach the KCC students in the clinical setting. Um, so it's not uncommon once you become a, an RT that you, especially if you work in our area, that you might uh, have to, you know, work with some of our students, um, which is very rewarding to a lot of people. So, um, or if, you, you know, you can move on um, if you don't want to work in the clinical setting anymore, which is what I eventually did after almost 15 years in the clinical setting. I am now full-time at Kellogg Community College, right? So you can get in to education where you're completely removed from the, the clinical setting and teach strictly didactically or textbook stuff and lab stuff. The job outlook, right? Everybody wants to know, okay, if I go through the program, what are my chances of finding a job, right? It's kind of important. You don't want to spend, you know, $18,000 and then to find out that you can't get a job. Well, good news. Um, uh, the our, our students are all found, finding jobs. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, there are a lot of jobs available right now for a couple reasons. Um, one, the baby boomers are starting to retire. Um, so I know in our local area, there are, I've gotten calls from a couple, two or three managers that are saying, we need your students. We, we need uh, people. There, there's a, a significant need right now for x-ray techs. The jobs are there and they're in all settings, not just the hospital, but they're in, in and whatnot. And I will... Um, I'll share with you in a little bit about those different settings that you have an option to work in. So uh, the overall employment of a radiologic technologist is projected to grow 9% from 2018 to 2028. And that is faster than the average for all occupations. So the market is good. As the population grows older, there will be an increase in medical conditions that require imaging as a tool for making diagnosis. And again, I also added, um, our baby, the baby boomers that are working now in the clinical settings um, are in the process of retiring. So that's um, creating more availability. The hours. So what's unique, of course, a, a lot of healthcare professionals work different hours. So we're no different. Um, radiographers can work full-time. You can work part-time or you can work casual we refer to that as PRN or as needed or when needed. So there are a lot of uh, choices um, to fit your needs on what, what you wanna do. You can work full-time, you can work part-time or you can work casual. So um, whatever fits your need. Um, and it's nice to know that there, there's a flexibility there. Um, and we have students that some of them just wanna work part-time, some of them don't want full-time. Um, and then some of them just want to work when they want to work. So it totally just depends on, on the individual. Um, what I will tell you is that all of these um, positions, uh, there are, they are available um, now, um, currently. There are hospitals and, and clinical set, or settings that are looking for full, part-time, and as-needed um, techs. So... Uh, so we are needed 24-7, so it depends on the setting that you work, whether you work in a hospital or an outpatient clinic or whatnot, on whether or uh, not you will work, you know, on uh, different shifts and different, different hours. Um, and again, you know, some people want to work just first shift. Some people want to work second. Some people want to work third. Uh, so it just depends on what your need is and what your desires are and what matches, you know, your your particular situation. So you can work days, nights, or weekends. What I will tell you, um, the more you lean towards the hospital type settings, um, you have the opportunity to work the first, second, or third shifts or weekends and whatnot. As you move towards more of the outpatient settings, they work less uh, weekends and holidays and after hours. They're primarily um, first shift hours. So it completely depends on the settings, which brings us to the next, this next slide here. Um, 
So like I said, you can work in the hospital setting at a level one trauma center or a smaller facility um, where you'll do ER and surgery and inpatients and outpatients. Um, one of the things that I didn't mention is that the inpatients that you would do in the hospital setting, you would take a portable x-ray um, unit to their room to obtain images. So patients that aren't well enough in the hospital setting to, to come down to the x-ray department, we take our x-ray equipment to them and obtain images portably because their condition doesn't allow them to be safely transported to the, to, to the department. So anyway, so you've, you've got the hospital settings that you, you have an option to work at, outpatient clinics like orthopedic offices, um, I got a call last week from an orthopedic office in Portage um, looking for an x-ray tech. So um, pain clinics, um, urgent care centers, mobile Im imaging. I know there's um, jobs out there for mobile Im imaging, which is unique. Um, so what you do with that is you have a portable mobile unit, an uh, x-ray unit on a truck. And you would travel to different outpatient facilities, maybe nursing homes and whatnot. And you would um, take your portable unit into the nursing home, um, obtain your images. Um, so you would travel throughout you know, the state or the area, depending on the company that you work for, um, which would determine your, your particular location or area in which you obtain the images at. But, um, so mobile imaging is an option. Uh, the thing to remember is that there are so many different options um, when you become an x-ray tech. You're not strictly defined to a hospital setting or to a certain shift or location. Um, there's a lot of versatility. Sales and service. So you can sell x-ray equipment, um, which is something I actually dabbled in when I first um, came out of school, um, I sold x-ray equipment and um, it was a great experience. Um, not, not something that I was meant to do forever, um, but nonetheless, it was a good experience and it's an opportunity for someone you know, who, who enjoys that. Um, industry uses uh, x-ray to check for cracks and flaws in materials like welding joints and whatnot. University research labs, colleges and universities like educator, uh, educators like myself, so working at Kellogg Community College, you know, um, instructing in the didactic aspect of the, of the program, breast imaging centers, and then travel technologists. That's also a unique opportunity right now because what you have the opportunity to do is once you become registered, you can work with different companies and you can travel anywhere. Um, you can work in Hawaii for a month. You can work in California, Maine. Um, you can set your location. You can say, I, I wanna do, I wanna be a travel tech and I wanna travel to the east side or the west side or Alaska or whatever. And you can set the duration in which you're um, assigned to that hospital. Um, it's not uncommon for techs to reassign for that particular hospital, but if you find that that particular area or whatnot as a travel tech you, you, you don't like or you want to explore different areas, then you can say, okay, I want to explore different areas and they will you know, transfer you to an area um, where there's an availability. So it's really unique that you can actually travel. And the other thing with that is, is usually the pay is greater. So travel techs get paid a, a better money. Um, they usually pay for housing and food. Um, but the thing that you got to remember too is that you're not accruing usually retirement um, and things like that. So there's always pros and cons um, with all the decisions, of course, that you all make. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities um, depending whatever your needs might be. I touched on this a little bit, um, but additional opportunities after you become an RT, um, you can get into computed tomography, you can get into MRI, cardiac interventional radiography, vascular interventional radiography. I'm, I, I spoke in general terms earlier and said IR or interventional radiology where they do a lot of those other procedures. Um, 
but these are two specific areas of interventional radiology that you could work mammography, bone densitometry, ultrasound, uh, a registered radiologist assistant or an RPA. So it's kind of like your physician's assistant or your PA in the doctor's office. Well, a registered radiologist assistant is a, a radiology PA essentially. So you can get additional training to do something like that. Management, if you wanna um, further your education and get your bachelor's, after you become an RT, you can work as a department manager or a department director again, teaching and education. An application specialist, this is um, something that some people uh, enjoy and, and explore. And that is, you know, um, when hospitals get new equipment, they have to have someone um, from the company, an application specialist, and usually those application specialists are x-ray techs. Um, and they teach um, the staff on how to use the new equipment. So um, that's, an option if you want to work for GE or Philips or Siemens or um, one of those companies, you have the opportunity to share your knowledge and, and teach others on how to use specific equipment. And then of course, sales. That's it's something very unique to think about is uh, the, all the areas in which you can work and uh, the career advancements that exist, it's quite unique. I'm sure all of you are wondering, of course, um, what's the pay, right? We all want to know how much am I going to get paid to do this, right? So um, in 2019, the uh, median annual wage for radiographers was 63000 according to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. The highest 10% in the profession earned more than 89000 okay? Um, the average hourly pay in Michigan is twenty five sixty six an hour. Now, one thing I, I need to mention is that this the pay varies depending on where you're at what you do what's the facility how many credentials do you have um how much experience do you have um you know some hospitals pay more than other hospitals um starting out so you know you're in a graduating from our second year students graduating from our program now are in a unique position in which you know, there's jobs open uh, at a lot of our uh, set local areas, hospitals, and they can choose, you know, where they want to go, um, you know, who, who's paying more, right? Um, but, you know, you got to remember money's not always everything, right? You, you, you got to like what you do and you got to enjoy, you know, the people that you work with. So um, it's not uncommon for our clinical sites to actually hire our, our students. So usually wherever you do your clinical internship, um, our, our, our clinical sites are phenomenal at hiring our students. So, so the pay is pretty darn good considering what, what, you, uh, what you have to pay for the degree, $18,000 or, or about. Uh, between 18 and 19 for all your gen ed and, and program uh, courses, um, the pay is pretty darn good. So moving, moving into that, uh, the general education courses. So some of the courses that you want to think about taking, um, your medical terminology, your anatomy and physiology, your math, sociology, uh, psychology. So um, We've made some changes to the program and we require that um, you get your general education courses, your prerequisite courses done on the front end so that when you enter the program, you're taking all radiography courses. You can focus all of your attention on radiography courses. So once your gen ed courses are, are um, completed and you get accepted into the program, we're only four semesters, fall, spring, summer and fall. So four semesters and you know you pass after the completion of the program, um, we're an accredited program and you, you would take a national exam. Um, so once you pass that national exam after you complete these four semesters, then you become registered and you, you, you can now use the credentials RT are or registered technologist in radiography. Some of the things that you might study, radiation safety and protection, we'll talk about in the program, 
patient positioning. How do we pay, position the patient to obtain the proper images? Of course, patient care and communication is critical. And then what does it take to produce, uh, not just positioning the patient for a diagnostic image, but how do we set the proper technical factors to obtain a diagnostic image? There's a couple aspects that you need to consider as an x-ray tech in order to provide a, a diagnostic image for the physician to interpret. And then of course, um, you saw the video where students were practicing in the lab and then also you go to clinicals, which moves us to the next slide. We have six clinical sites that we're affiliated with. Um, you have uh, ProMedica Coldwater is one of our sites, Oak Lawn Hospital in Marshall, Battle Creek VA Medical Center, Bronson Methodist Hospital in Kalamazoo is one of our clinical sites, Ascension Borges Hospital in Kalamazoo is one of our sites, and then Bronson Battle Creek Hospital is one of our clinical sites. So we have excellent uh, clinical sites. And we try to send students um, to the sites based on a couple things. One, driving location from their home, as well as um, uh, experience. And what I mean by that is students will experience two of the six clinical sites while in the program. So you'll switch once, so you'll get an opportunity to work in two of the clinical sites. And um, we try to keep in mind driving distance um, and experience when we uh, switch sites like that. Last but not least, some additional information for you. So the first is a website that you can go to to obtain additional information on the radiography program. Second is a, a fun Facebook page that one of our clinical instructors, Katie Pfeiffer, created. Third is my contact information. Um, feel free to shoot me an email with any additional questions that you may think of. If you don't think of um, right now, I'm happy to answer any questions um, that you may have. And then, of course, um, the Allied Health Academic Advisor, Caleb Asbury, who has uh, been on uh, this Zoom meeting, um, is very helpful in answering any questions you might have as far as getting into the program. What do you need and, you know, what, what, can, you, what can you do to set yourself up for success on getting into the program?